Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I am geeking out about today's guest. I'm telling you what, we are you're in for a special treat today. But of course, before I do that, I definitely want to invite you guys to join the Facebook group. And the reason you want to join the Facebook group is not just another Facebook group to be in. This is a place where you can get real help from real sellers, have questions answered by people who have just started all the way to people that are veterans like myself. I mean, 11 years running on Amazon is like, we're, I'm like a FBA grandma over here. Like it's been so long. So making sure you want to join the Facebook group, but not just anybody gets in. I mean, we don't just let everyone in. You actually have to have a code word to get in because then we know, A, you're really interested. B, you've listened to an episode or you've seen some content, you've gotten an email and you want this content. We don't want people in here that don't want to be in here. We want people that are really looking for answers for Amazon and for uh, building their business and uh, all the things that they need. So your code word this week is Todd. Yes, that is our special guest today, but that is the code word for today. So make sure you go to mommyincome.com slash join and use your code word, Todd, because that means we know how you came here and what you listen to. But speaking of Todd, let's talk about Todd for a second. Have you ever come across a listing and you thought, oh my gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> that listing's terrible. Perhaps you wanted to sell something wholesale or even retail arbitrage and it has a terrible listing so that you moved on, right? Well, today's guest is very special. I like to call him the listing whisperer. I don't know that he likes that title or not, but we'll find out. And I mean, literally he has got this amazing method where you revitalize listings and just make more money. He's been, he's generating over a million dollars a year, went from retail arbitrage, private label, finally landing on wholesale. And he really is an expert at what he does. And so without further ado, Todd, welcome to the Amazon Files. And as he's getting set up, I gotta tell you, he's a CEO and entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur adventure, host of the Amazon Wholesale Podcast, and he is our expert. Welcome, Todd, to the show. How are you? Yes, thank you, Kristen. I am fantastic. How are you? I am doing really well. Excited to talk to you today. So why don't you tell our guests a little bit about yourself and um, maybe how you got into e-commerce? Yeah, for sure. So I guess it goes way back to when I was about 14 years old. Uh, you know, the, the internet was really starting to get going and I created this website called bestteen.com at the time. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore, but what I started doing was putting on like games and chat groups and newsletter signups and things for teenagers and ended up making like three to four hundred dollars a month on that before kind of you know the dot-com crash and that all disappeared and people realized it wasn't necessarily worth paying two dollars an email to get people to sign up so that was my kind of introduction to the internet marketing and making money online and from there you know I went to college I've got degrees in computer programming computer networking and I went into that whole world for quite a while uh, and ended up starting my own business called TC Tech Computers with my business partner. And we built that to multiple retail stores, serving thousands of customers, fixing tens of thousands of computers and phones, and uh, ended up selling that to one of my employees because I really started getting interested in selling on eBay and especially Amazon. So my first shipment of sending stuff into Amazon were these bed sheets that I had been selling on eBay, right? So I went on to Amazon and like, that looks just like the ones that I'm selling. So I sent it in and Amazon promptly lost my entire shipment of that product. It was like 40 bed sets. Oh and my word. Yeah, thankfully they paid me full retail price for that. And I also found out later that I was actually gonna be a hijacker on that person's listing anyways. I didn't know at the time, but that was back in like 2013, 2012. And from there went into the retail arbitrage, did some private label, had some failures in the private label world, 
uh, have one success that I'm still selling, but I really found a home in the Amazon wholesale world, selling other people's products. And I'm currently doing uh, over $100,000 a month on that. This year, I'm thinking I should be able to end up between 1.5 to $2 million in sales. So we'll see how this fourth quarter goes. But it's been a lot of fun figuring out all the little things in Amazon. You know how many crazy little things we have to deal with all the time. Oh, for sure. I mean, the struggle is real with all the different changes they made. I mean, I'm surprised and, and just got to give you a high five for not quitting after they literally lost your first shipment. I mean, so many people are facing so many different hardships in Amazon right now. And it's just like, this is our little, you know, pep talk for them to just kind of hang in there. Like nothing's going to go perfectly. And you know, what I love about what you just said just now is you've gone through all these different things and had a lot of trials and errors and mistakes. And I'm sure there's some money lost and some failures and things like that. So um, what kept you going and what, what kept you moving to the next thing and not just saying the heck with this Amazon thing? Yeah, for sure. I was in debt probably around $70,000 at one point from screwing up basically and learning from my mistakes. And, you know, what kept me going is just, I wanted to learn this. And I seen other people being successful at it and I knew I could be as well. And I wanted the freedom that a, your own business brings, at least if you do it right, correct? You know, if you're passing mm -hmm. stuff off to assistants and things like that. And so I just treated it all as learning experiences. You know, I, you couldn't pay to go to college to learn what I've learned over the course of doing everything. So really just the drive and motivation to keep going and build the business that I'm building. Yeah, well, that's amazing. And I love your resilience there because, you know, when you really want to learn something, it's, it's, that's why I'm, I'm a college dropout. Um, I went to college for the, I had a free ride, full scholarship, and I ended up quitting um, mainly because a, they kind of said I have to until I declare a major because I took every class that it was required. And then they're like, well, pick something. I'm like, there's nothing here for me. I have to do something different than this. I, I was, you know, started eBay and kind of never looked back after I joined Amazon. But, you know, same type of thing is that the school of hard knocks is kind of expensive, but you can learn things there that you can't learn anywhere else. So, you know, not needing, a, you know, having a college degree or not having doesn't really matter in this. It's all about that bouncing back and figuring out, okay, this didn't work. What else? I mean, a lot of people, this is kind of cliche to some people, but a lot of people have, have heard it. You know, Edison did a thousand different light bulbs before he landed on the one that worked. I mean, a thousand talk about the resilience in that is just keep coming back and trying it again, just totally believing. So you've, you've got some private label screw ups and you've got one, one there and you had retail arbitrage. I know it doesn't last long for most people because they realize how um, unscalable it can be. I mean, there's scalable to a point, you know, but then at that point you've got to start thinking about other things. So wholesale is this magic formula, right? I mean, just, it's, it's really this easy, right? Just contact suppliers and sell stuff on Amazon and make millions. Isn't that how easy it is? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Everything we do is super easy, right? At least, at least according to some of the gurus out there. Oh my word. The struggle is real. We're, we're not those people. We're really here to tell people what the truth is. Okay. So you start doing wholesale and you really started getting going. Um, you know, talk about that experience for a minute and what made you decide like, yes, this is the thing that I'm pursuing. Sure. So like I mentioned, I had the failures in the private label world. I was still trying to do that. And I eventually do have a product now that's working good. And I based that off of a, my, one of my own needs that I was looking for. And in between the failures though, and finding that success, I was looking for something else and found out about the wholesale world. I can't remember exactly how I found out about it. It was probably a YouTube video or something like that. And I just kind of went down that rabbit hole. And it really is, I think, one of the areas, it doesn't have as much risk as private label. And it can be easier, especially physically easier than uh, retail arbitrage and online arbitrage because if you find those 
products, you can just keep reordering and restocking. And so I just really dove into that, learning as much about it and messed that up quite a few times, of course, along the way, as we learn, you know, you're always, even in wholesale, you have failed products. But what's really cool about wholesale is that I didn't order a thousand of that. I ordered maybe 24 or 48 or whatever a case pack is. So I just clear that out, maybe break even or lose a few dollars and move on to the next one. And just kept learning and improving my methods and communication. You know, a big thing that you probably know in wholesale, as opposed to retail arbitrage and private label is the personal communications and building those personal relationships really is what wholesale is all about. I can't say enough about the relationships you can have with your reps and your vendors and your companies and, you know, different places. I know that there's a lot of different methods out there where they talk about, um, you know, we've talked about this, uh, you know, in the wholesale bundle system as well is trying to, you know, landing exclusives, but you don't necessarily have to. What you need to do is get the best rep that represents about 15 different brands or more, and then start placing orders through them. You know, I, a lot of people run into the roadblock or they think it's a roadblock or they haven't even tried because they're assuming it's a roadblock is that all these vendors are not going to let you sell on Amazon. They all say no. That's like the number one thing that people come and complain to me about. And, you know, I'm just saying, keep turning over those rocks. There's a ton of vendors that could care less if you flew the inventory to the moon once you bought it. They just want to sell it to you because that's when they make their money. They don't really care about what happens after that. So there are tons and tons of those and there's millions and billions of products on Amazon. You can't tell me you cannot find at least one wholesaler to say yes to you because you know, I've got a pocket full. Anyone who wants some wholesale vendors, there's a list, uh, mommyincome.com slash vendors. There's five vendors that are either no or low, very low minimums, $300 or less that will guaranteed work with Amazon sellers. So check that list out, you guys, if you want it, because now you're left without any excuses. You have at least five vendors to work with. You're Welcome. Now let's move on. Okay, so when we were talking last time, you were talking about this method, which I like just fell in love with. And I love this idea of what you've come up with, with the mine and refine this, this listing revitalizer. So you've got your wholesale products. And the, the issue with the wholesale that a lot of people tend to have is there's a lot of competition or there's just the listings are bad or, um, you know, they're, they're, they're non-existent, all these different things. So your method is taking an existing listing and doing what with it? So talk a little bit about this method that you have. Yeah, for sure. So I'm calling it the wholesale mine and refine method. And it's something that I really dove into. You know, a lot of people, when they think about wholesale, not, not the bundle world, but the regular wholesale where you're just directly selling whatever product, they think of like the big brands and they're looking for those products that are going to sell 500 a month or a thousand a month. And you can definitely find those. They're definitely out there. I have some of them. They're really nice when you can find them because of how many you can sell. But when you get those bigger listings, you're going to be competing with sellers like River Trading Colony or Etails are a couple of really big ones out there. And these guys are literally selling around $100 million a year or more in product. So their ROIs that they're accepting are like 10% or 20% because they're just going for volume on a lot of stuff. You know, if they can set, do $100 million in sales at 10%, that's $10 million in profit. So right. that's all they're doing, and you're competing against that a lot of times. Uh, now, sometimes you can find ones that they're not on, and you can do pretty good, maybe get 30% ROI, 35% ROI. But what I've really started doing a lot lately, as I mentioned, is that mine and refine. So I'm looking for products that are collecting dust, so to speak. So you get that list from a distributor, maybe it has a thousand or 5,000 or 10,000 products on it. A lot of people are filtering out the ones if they're not getting 30 sales a month or 50 sales a month, uh, and they're not looking at those. And those are the ones that I'm really actually looking at even more. Uh, so I'm really looking for ones that are maybe getting a handful of sales 
don't have any FBA sellers. I can look at the keeper graph and look at the history. Maybe it's never had FBA sellers. Maybe the price is super high comparably to what I could sell it for. And the listing is really bad. Like, you know, we've all seen them, the listing where the main picture is like blurry or just like a photograph that somebody took on the side of the road or whatever. It doesn't have any bullet points or maybe it just says made in China or something as the bullet my, point. My favorite ones are from manufacturers where they had or paid somebody to upload their entire catalog and it says item number 45782 blah 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 this and like there's really nothing else. They literally just uploaded like a spreadsheet of like item numbers and random titles and you think wow, this could really be a good product if they spent some time with this listing and did something special to it. So, so when you find these, I got to ask the burning question because I know I can hear my audience going, what software do you use to find such listings? Do, is there, do you have a favorite? So I use, I kind of go back and forth between tactical arbitrage and analyzer tools, formerly AMZ Analyzer. Um, it kind of depends on my mood for the day. I, I think it's easier and quicker to do stuff in analyzer tools for me, but I have a virtual assistant that I work with and tactical arbitrage is online. So it's easier there. Now analyzer tools does have a web version now, but they don't have that keep a graph right in the search results like a tactical arbitrage does. So, you know, I don't think it matters which, software tool you use so much, you know, analyzer tools, tactical arbitrage, uh, price checker two is another one that's out there. They all do similar stuff. So it's kind of a personal preference, but it's more about like the filters that I was mentioning that you're looking for. Cause a lot of people are cutting that off at so many sales and things like that. And when, when I find one that has like maybe no sales right now, but has 10 or 20 reviews and it's like four and a half, five stars. Those ones are gold to me because they sold good at some point or they've sold at least at some point, but there's some reason there's not selling now. And if I can figure that out and fix it, a lot of times I can have those listings to myself for quite a long time and be making, you know, 75, 80, 90%, 100% ROI sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, I love this. And this is, again, why we talked before and I was like, oh, this is the greatest. So for so when you're looking at this, so talk about the filters for a minute, because I know that what exactly would you say is like to be able to find the listings that have potential for revitalizing or, you know, things like that? What are just a couple of filters that you use to say, okay, this is the, the plumb lines. These are the parameters that in general, we always know it's always, it depends, right? But you know, what are your general um, guidelines for trying to find said, said things? Sure, so the biggest ones are really the reviews and the rating. So I'll a lot of times set my filter to five reviews total or more, and then four stars or higher. Uh, you don't want anything lower than four stars because then it makes it harder to really get traction. There could be issues with the product. And then I make sure, of course, Amazon is not selling on the listing. So that would be the other setting. And that is really it. Then I just kind of go through those listings that are remaining, open them up in Amazon and just look at the listing, see if it's any good, if it's really bad and I can improve it check the history on the keep -a graph and really dive into analyzing that product to see if it's potentially something that I could start selling and really boost the sales on it. This is so great for those of you who are just dipping your toe into wholesale or you don't have a ton of money, but you have a little bit more time maybe than you have money and you want to invest small and start small. This is a great method. I guarantee you if anybody has catalogs right now, hello, this is me too. I have catalogs right now. I haven't explored the entire catalog. I'm ordering certain products, but it's also leaving money on the table to where if you get somebody and guess what? The greatest thing about this method is that 
it's trainable for someone else to do. Yay. We're all about outsourcing because we want to use our brain power as our CEOs of our companies to make sure that everything is running smoothly and have everybody, you know, do other things. So this is a great method to get started. Of course, I recommend everybody trying it themselves first so that they can kind of find these products. So then when you find these products within your parameters and say, you know, Amazon's not selling it and it looks like it's got great potential. Now what? Now what do you do when you come across these listings? You have, is there some sort of method of figuring out why this item isn't selling as well and what you can do about it? Yeah, for sure. So once you find one, let's say it has maybe 20 reviews on it, listing is really bad. The next thing that I would probably do is just look like when the last review was. So if you look at the reviews and the last review was like 2016, 2017, then maybe not be worthwhile uh, digging into. You know, you'll have to kind of analyze some other things. But if the last review maybe was 2019 or sometime in 2020, then it has some possibility because it's sold recently, right? Because every one review, you may be sold 50 or 100, you know, to get that one review. So you gotta so keep true. that in mind. <laughs> And so from there, if the listing is really bad and there's no FBA seller, just becoming the first FBA seller at a decent price, that I found usually double, triples, or quadruples the sales just automatically. Because now people are going to be more likely to trust buying that product with an FBA. They have the guarantee from Amazon, you know, all the prime shoppers and everything out there. And then from there, upgrading the photos. And when I say upgrading the photos, I'm not paying someone to take fancy photos and stuff. I bought a you know, $50 photo booth off Amazon and I'm taking the photos with my Galaxy S10. Taking new photos of it, some really nice ones, paying someone on Fiverr or something to remove the background, uploading that optimizing the title and the bullets in the description and right there you're going to double or triple your sales again because now amazon all of a sudden is like oh that's what this product is so i should probably rank it for these keywords and you know it's already got reviews so amazon knows they can trust it that it's maybe a good product that people might want and so it's going to get traction a little bit easier that way. So just by doing those things, I've found can really kickstart sales uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, that, that those are great things to be able to update. I mean, I encourage people to update their own listings every year or so if your product lasts that long and that you want to just kind of revitalize it. So this is something that everybody is capable of doing. Everyone can submit this now. Okay, this is like the, the other like elephant in the room that I just, I anticipate everybody's questions, right? Like, or I'm assuming because I have them. So if you've ever revitalized a listing, you submit these changes, like does this work for everyone? Does Amazon allow you to submit changes? And then does the, do you ever get any pushback from them or saying, um, I'm not so sure about your updates here? Yeah, definitely. And so that's one of the little risks, right? Is that you can't really make changes to a listing until you have stock in there. Uh, one, that's one of the requirements that Amazon has now for updating listings. So you're always ordering, you know, a really small amount, like one case, maybe six, 12, 24, whatever their minimum is to get it in there. Um, and actually, you know, one trick that I found around that is that you can add it to your seller central, jack up the price, which you have to play with that a little bit now because of the price triggers they've had lately and shutting down listings but then you just put one in stock and they'll let you make the changes then because they think you ah. have the FBM. So that's kind of one little golden nugget there. So let me get this right. That is a golden nugget. So in order to revitalize a listing, you need to have one in stock. So your suggestion is to list the item as the listing is and you know put one in stock as you know merchant fulfilled and then you can suggest the changes and then of course 
hopefully you don't sell that in the time where you have to, you know, pull it back. So that is one way to not have to buy the stock ahead of time. Um, so that's a good tip because I know that some people are really risk averse. I would be, I'd be ordering two or three cases and be like, I'm going to see if this works out. But you know, my risk level is really high. I don't mind taking risks and figuring stuff out because that's usually when I find the pot of gold is when I'm willing to go the places other people are scared to go. Um, so that, that makes a lot of sense. So great. Thanks for that wonderful golden nugget there about changing because there are definitely people that would be naysayers thinking, well, I don't want to buy something that's not doing good and then assume it's going to do good once I fix it. Um, but you know, that's, that's really good advice there. So they submit changes because they have to have stock in, in order to submit changes. Now, have you ever seen them ask for any sort of proof or anything like that to where they're saying, okay, you've got to show us this or that in order to change the listing? Yeah, so that's the benefit of doing these listings that are really bad and not getting very many sales because Amazon's kind of like, okay, make the changes, please, so we can get some sales on this. We're not making any money anyway. So, it seems to be a lot easier. You know, it could be different depending on people's how much like seller feedback you have on your account. You know, I've got about 2000 seller feedback. So Amazon is 99%. So Amazon knows they can trust me for the most part. So it could be your mileage may vary. Mm -hmm. um, but I found that it is pretty easy to get the changes on these listings that are not doing well. And you do that through the help center. They've got the little tool in there. You can just select to update a product listing. And there's a whole like wizard there that can walk through. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, then you're gonna have to start providing proof. Um, and the proof, the minimum proof that they usually request is a link to the manufacturer's website showing the changes that you want to make. Um, they're usually pretty loose on allowing that. You know, if the manufacturer's website at least has the, some of the information you want to do, they'll let that go. Um, otherwise, they might also request like photographs of the item as well, of all sides of the item to uh, verify the changes that you're looking to make as well. That generally happens sometimes when people are bundling and they want to change a, a listing that has different packaging, like a gift set or something like that, where they've repackaged it into a gift basket, which is perfectly allowed. It's just something that Amazon then asks for that. And they, so it's a very similar to that. That's usually if it's a package issue or there's a photo that you want to include that maybe isn't included. Um, but that's not difficult, especially if you have, you know, if you're doing the images anyways, um, I like to use use a company called Pixels to remove the background. Um, they do it very quickly. They're, that's like their jam and they actually know how to make Amazon specs to the best and high res and everything else. Um, so that's another thing. I know you said Fiverr. That's a great place too, to get, get some of these things done. Um, and there's a lot of people like on LinkedIn and other stuff like that. If you, you know, a lot of people ask about lifestyle photos, you know, it's like, do you need these? I'm like, well, they're nice, but like, is it really going to, if, unless it's something you have to show in progress, like it's not necessary to go all out with a, a lifestyle photo. And unless you're a photographer, like, let's be honest, my lifestyle pictures, not so great. So, you know, stay in your lane and don't worry about lifestyle photos. You want to make sure people understand exactly what they're getting and using every field necessary to fill in keywords um, with these listings. So the first thing, so in order, uh, let's just list these for fun. Um, in order, what would you change first if you first go into a listing? What do you feel like the first most important thing to update would be? Uh, well, the, the most important thing definitely is being FBA instead of FBM. Um, after that would definitely be the, probably photos and title is almost tied. Um, because if the photo is bad, you're not going to get any clicks, but if the title is bad, then you're not going to show up for yeah. what people are searching for. So you kind of got to have both of those. And then after that, definitely the bullets and then a tie between the description and the back end keywords. Yep, the search terms for sure. Also, just so you guys are aware, I've said this before, I'll say it again. This is your bonus freebie. You're welcome. 
Um, don't skip subject matter in the back end search terms. Subject matter is coming up in Amazon's algorithm. So fill it out. And subject matter, I know people get stuck on this because they somehow think, I, what do you mean subject matter? This is a HDMI cord. Like how does it have subject matter? The reality is there's tons of other keywords you can put in there. Have you ever run out of keywords? I have 250 characters is not a lot. And so when, when it comes to those keywords, so this is where you use extra keywords, other keywords that you might want to be repeating, um, not repeating everywhere else, but then putting in here. I mean, uh, the sky is the limit, but using those extra fields, I mean, it can't harm you. It can only help you to put extra things, but not spammy keywords, guys. Don't be putting in, you know, like coffee mug or, you know, COVID mask when you need to be, you know, you're selling an HDMI cord. I mean, let's be real. Okay. So yeah. this is just like golden nugget central here. This is something that anybody can do right here, right now, um, before, maybe even before they purchase a wholesale, they can look at this and see what, what these changes are. The proof is in the pudding though. The, let's, I know you mentioned a number and I'm going to pull out, I'm going to ask you another numbers question, but like how much have you seen profits increase once you've done this to a listing yourself? I mean, you mentioned three to four times in sales. I feel like that happens alone when you go from seller fulfilled to merchant fulfilled. But then after that, say you're, you know, you, maybe it already has an FBA seller, maybe one, and it's still just kind of a lane listing. What kind of increase should we look to expect? to expect when we're making these changes. Yeah, so if you did you know, everything we've talked about properly so far, you should be able to pretty easily get the listing to around 50 to 100 sales a month. And even beyond that, it's all gonna depend on the listing. Now I've got some of them that end up doing 150, 200 you're probably not gonna necessarily get it to like the thousand sales a month, although you could, uh, but that's gonna be rare. So more we're looking at adding just a bunch of different products, you know, getting them all to 25, 50, 100 sales per month and adding them up. But it, you know, it really depends on the listing. And one other thing that I didn't mention that I also look for is variations of products that are not combined into a variation because that can really help boost sales as well, especially if one of those variations is maybe doing okay, and then adding in the others can really kickstart the sales of all of them as well. So when you say variation, you mean that there's, you know, there's one variation there, but then there's a separate listing for another one that's not doing so great, or there's a variation available and it's not on Amazon. Let's clarify yeah. that. There may not be any variation set up on Amazon, but let's say you've got a coffee mug and it comes in blue, green, red, and purple, and they're all just separate listings on Amazon. And maybe the blue one is right now selling 50 sales a month and the other ones aren't doing anything. And you can combine those under one listing so that now people can click which color they want and that typically will boost the sales of all of the colors on app. That is a great tip. I know that a lot of people, um, you know, I've always had some struggles with some variation listings, not listing them, but I love, I'm a data nerd and I like all the data and I hate the fact when they do variations that like the data doesn't separate, like it doesn't set. I mean, sometimes if you get like more expensive software and stuff like that, they can kind of break it down for you. But the reality is you go in there and it just has one sales rank for all these products and then, you know, breaking them down in individually doesn't give you as much data as you would, but that's a great opportunity to just make a little extra money by adding a little a variation to something. I've seen a lot of things in catalogs where you only see the black one selling really well on Amazon, but you don't see the other one. So bringing that to the marketplace. Now, if you don't create the listing, can anyone go in and add a variation or is that like a restricted thing? Yeah, I have not had a lot of trouble creating variations. Uh, it's the same kind of thing with updating the listings. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so you just go in there, you add the product, select the variations, and put all the ASINs of the existing stuff or existing listings in there and cross your fingers that it pulls them all together. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. If it doesn't, then you're working with seller support again to get that updated. Uh, but again, with these listings that are not really selling much, I find it 
really easy a lot of times to make those updates because Amazon usually gives control of a listing to whoever has last updated it before. And if nobody's updated it in a long time, then it's pretty easy for you to get control of those listings sometimes. Awesome. Well, this has been a wealth of information, but wait, there's more. You guys, Todd has put this into a course, a little mini course that he's going to walk you through step by step. This was just like this brief overview and you're welcome because you've got tons of golden nuggets and that's great. But if you want to know the exact processes, the exact tools, the exact numbers and parameters and all these things, Todd is going to be hosting this live mini class at entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash refine. And that's where you're going to find this course coming up. You want to sign up for it. You want to get in the know because this is going to be more, I mean, this is your little overview. This is kind of like the 10,000 foot bird's eye view of what this looks like, but the more in-depth step-by-step course is coming soon. And you guys want to go to entrepreneuradventure.com slash refine because you're going to want to uh, sign up for this, this mini course. And I'm telling you, anybody can do this. A little bit of change goes a long way. You guys, you can use a 15 minute hustle on this once a day, once a week, and just continually increase your profit margins. You don't have to do a whole lot more. You're not creating listings from scratch. You're just giving them a facelift. You're revitalizing them and refining that. And I think this is a great method for anybody out there, whether you're a beginner, whether you've been doing this a long time like us, you know, whatever that is. So make sure you go to that link and check out the course there. Anything else that you want everyone to know, Todd? Yeah, no, just that, you know, with the course that you talked about, what we're going to be doing probably the week after this airs is we're going to do a live version of it on a webinar. So if people go to that entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash refine, they can get on that waiting list and it'll tell them when the webinar is coming up. And that way, if they have questions as I'm going through it, we can answer those questions and really dive into everything. So I think that'll be really helpful for people. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm signing up because I want the whole, I want the insider information. Why? Because y'all know I have VAs, right? You know that I'm going to take this method and I'm going to give it to the VAs and we're going to just, you know, make it rain, right? So this is great. Todd, thank you so much for being a guest and sharing all of this amazing information that people can take action on uh, right now. We appreciate your time and energy. Again, you can find Todd and all of his goodness and his podcast, which is now, let me, I want to get this right because I know it's like both your title and your name. It's the Amazon Wholesale Podcast, but it's also Entrepreneur Adventure. You can find it either way. Just search for Todd and search for entrepreneuradventure.com or the Amazon Wholesale. I'm going to say Amazon Files. <laughs> That's my podcast. The, the Amazon Wholesale uh, Podcast there and listen to those episodes. He's had some great guests and we have a lot of mutual friends. And so make sure you check out his podcast as well. Again, thank you guys so much. Your code word for the Facebook group is hashtag Todd. We'll see you the same time, the same place next week on the Amazon Files.